in this video, we, we will be taking a two, take a look at two computers I scored for free a few months ago, but never made a video on it, shockingly, because I didn't have the time, it, because I was still in high school at the time, and now that I graduated, I have time to do the video. So we're going to take a look at two computers here in this video. We're going to take a look at Dell Optiplex 380 and an HP DC 5700 small form factor desktop. I scored both of these free, and they both have one common problem. They didn't have hard, they don't have hard drives, and well, they both didn't have memory when I got them. But I was able, to, I found some memory in my scrap bin for this one, and I got to work. But I still need the hard drive for it. But I also need a floppy and DVD drive for it. This one I got almost everything, but I'm missing the memory. So yeah. They're both in pieces, but yeah, I was able to recover this one, determined it worked, which gave me the motivation to go after this one to make it work. So, yeah, stay tuned if you want to see these computers and their many problems. <laughs> but rest assured, these can, problems can be fixed. I hope this one doesn't have bad BIOS, though, so... He's like, can't really do a lot with it right now. So, one piece of advice is, there's a lot more content with the DC5700 over here than the Optiplex 380. Just to keep that in mind when you're watching the video. Okay, today we're gonna take a look at an HP computer. I scored a few months ago, but never really made a video about. Well, what you see here is an HP Compact, so it's a business machine. That used to be a Windows XP sticker. I took that off, being it's not going to have XP when I'm done with it. It's going to be running Linux. I don't know a distro yet. It's got a Core 2 Duo. We'll get into the specs of that later. And it's got, I got it with no memory, but I put 4 gigs of memory in it. So, yeah. It was a mess when I got it, and I still need a hard drive, floppy drive, and DVD drive for it to this very day. I haven't worked on it yet, because I need to get another part for it. That's really important to it. But, well, I'm going to do a tour of it anyway. But just be warned, it's missing a part. Or it's incomplete, at best. <laughs> and I had to put my own parts in, so... It's not really proper with the parts it's a mess with the parts as it is but i'm not worried about it because it works i'll show you what I do later with the memory and all that all right so as you see here <laughs> i don't have a hard drive floppy drive or dvd drive i did not get it with any of these things so yeah i didn't get the hard drive with it the floppy or the DVD drive, I had to check a Facebook message there. My bad. <laughs> and here's why I can't really do anything with it. I'm missing the stupid CPU shroud that it needs for this machine because of how it's built. You see, this is a BTX machine. How BTX machines work is there's no fan heat sink, and it's all blown through the front. You see here, there's a fan in the front of this machine. That sucks air, it, it spins like that. And then the air from the front gets pushed to a shroud of some type on the heatsink. It pushes it out, and in particular on the DC5700, it blows out the back and out the power supply. So there's no case fans this thing. It's just the front fan, which is typically these BTX computers, so I'm not shocked. My 5150 is much the same, so no big deal. But yeah, that's why I can't really use this machine for anything, because I'll overheat it and kill the processor, and I'll really have to do something with it. <laughs> and I won't be able to, I'll have to put a Celeron 420 in there, and hope that thing is busted, because it gives me the five beeps, which is a bad processor in these things. So, that's all I really have to show for the hardware. 
no hard drive, no DVD drive, and no DVD drive, and the CPU heat shroud is missing. So, it's really not usable right now until I get that shroud. However, it is 15 bucks on eBay, so I might do it and just make the machine work. It's not a big deal in all honesty because it's 15 bucks and I could probably get a hard drive from my neighbor or something. So, I don't really mind. As long as the hard drive in, as long as I get a hard drive for a reasonable price, floppy and a deep, and a hard drive and a, a DVD drive for a reasonable price. I don't really care about the floppy, I'm just going to get a card reader for it and put that in place there because there's a card reader right on the motherboard. I could put something a little newer in it. And no, that's the wrong way to install the heatsink. But honestly, I'm not really worried about it since it's not going to stay like this for very long. I'm gonna get the heat. I'm gonna get the heat sink shroud, flip it, and then I'm essentially gonna put a micro code update in there anyway, and put a new processor. So I don't really care. When I upgrade the processor, I'm gonna to to fix that. So no big deal. <laughs> so let's power this thing on. We'll go on some sort of ghetto approach to helping it cool properly at least. <laughs> This is gonna be this is gonna be cheap and it's going to be ghetto. <laughs> it's but I have to to keep the CPU cool. Please don't mock the solution. That's because I really don't have time to do much better. <laughs> I'm gonna lose air. I know that, but it's burn losing all air. <laughs> as long as the CPU gets some level of cooling to it, <laughs> it's good enough. Alright, so I'll hook this up and then we'll see how it reacts in post. Please note, it will not cry about the CPU because I haven't done the upgrade yet. Well, I tried it. It cried about the microcode. I have to do the microcode update first because HP thought it was good. I need to make it where you can't do it without that. So, oh well. <laughs> so I'm going to put XP on it temporarily, like one use at best, and do the microcode update. I'm not worried about it. So I'll just go ahead and just get the executable from another machine. Keep this bastard off the internet because it doesn't have... Because I don't have anything more than an XP license and XP's dead to Microsoft. <laughs> do the update. Put the shroud on. Do the upgrade and then put the this thing back on properly with the shroud. <laughs> so really, this thing's going to be a total hack job for a little bit. So, yeah, let's unhook this all, and then I'll go into BIOS, because that's as far as I can take it. Because I don't have a DVD drive, floppy, or hard drive for it. <laughs> hmm. Hey, at least I'm doing a demo of it. So, be grateful I'm doing a somewhat incomplete demo at best. Hold on, I'll hook this up. Alright, it's hooked up. Well, kind of. The problem is, I don't have a mouse hooked up, but this isn't a UEFI BIOS machine. It's way too old for that. So I don't really have to worry about the BIOS crying wolf about not having a mouse. Because it doesn't need it, so... If you boot one of these up at the basic level, it doesn't check for the mouse. But newer machines with UEFI BIOSes usually do, so... Not a requirement on this one, so I'm not going to bother. All right, so. F10 setup. English. Okay, this mother is fucking strange. All right, so we're in. <laughs> and I gotta get my note ready to cover up the network address. Because I've had to do that because it's in system information. But here's your BIOS. You got the about. You can flash the system ROM from here, which I did. That's how I got the 2.9 BIOS update on it. Because it didn't have an operating system on it. But what's interesting about this machine is you can't update the micro code from the BIOS like you can the actual BIOS itself. I don't get the point of that, but whatever. That was HP's call, so. I'm going to rip on for it, but I'm not going to get them too bad. But, 
Yeah, there's your storage configuration, storage options. I don't have a hard drive in here, so it's not going to show. Boot order. <laughs> I can only boot off a USB drive, but so I don't, and I can't because I don't have a USB drive in it, and I don't feel like wiping any. Security, I can do all this. Step security level, no. Less security. <sighs> Yeah. Let's let's like turn that on because that's a ridiculous disable. Yeah. System IDs. It's my U UI worthless. Network service boot. Yeah, I can turn that on all off. That's what it is. If it goes to the supervisor password or setup pat or use power on password. It's nothing special. LS power management. Take a look at that really quick if you want. Yeah, you can take a look at that. Oh, I can turn I can turn that off, but I'm gonna leave it at the default for now. Thermal. I wanna see what this does. I could control the idle fans and BIOS on this thing. Apparently knocked out my whack ass heat sink shroud. <laughs> wow, that's one good that's one fast fan. <laughs> wow. Oops. Remind me not to use that again without we'll the proper shroud. <laughs> Advanced usual. I could do an execute memory test. BIOS power on. Yeah, that's turning on automatically based on this BIOS clock. Onboard, turn those on off. PCI, that's IRQs most likely. Yep, that is. I could do even do power on options. I can enable that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it every 30 days. I don't have a hard drive in here, so that'd be worthless to me. No point because I can't. Do it means I don't have the recovery partition. Um, yeah, it's something else. I'm gonna turn that off for security reasons. I'm gonna wake up. I can delay the BIOS on it. Oh wow! Oh yeah, I know what that's for. That's for older operating systems being on Windows. Before Windows XP, so if I go DOS on it, I need to enable that. But that's it for the machine. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see what it does. Oh, I, you know, I already know what it will do to show why I really can't do a lot with it right now. I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> Oops. You make it go with that, right? Okay. Yeah, let this run and I'll come back to it later. <laughs> this is going to take a long time. And this, folks, is the end of the video. No system disk or disk error. Well, I can tell you the error now. It doesn't have a hard drive. So, I can't do a lot with it at the moment. I've done live boot CDs with it on occasion. But... And it works beautifully with that, so that's good enough. So I can really do with this thing right now. <laughs> Other than I have to get a CPU shroud for it, which this is the first priority, so I don't cook the processor because it needs that on there. And, and I'm not gonna do some whack ass setup like tape a fan on there, which I did in the past, because it doesn't work that well. It's you really need the shroud. Hmm. So. Yeah, I'm going to end the video now and talk about this one, an Optiplex 380. I haven't done much with it yet for different reasons. But it's missing the hard drive and the memory just like the DC5700. So, no, it's not going to be much work. It's going to be about the same, but I can't really boot it because of the missing, deep, because of the missing memory. Which, this one was also missing, but... This uses DDR2, which I have. 
That Octoplex is DDR3, which I don't have. So I'm kind of screwed with that for a while. <laughs> yeah, oh well. All right, take two of the C5700 BIOS. Because I did cover up the integrated Mac too well. I'm done probably, I still have issues with it, but it's better than it was before. So as you see, I have an SFF DC5700, so no board trickery. And I got an E6600 2.4 core tube in there. It's running a 1066 FSB. It's a 1066 megahertz front side bus, which is 1.6 gigahertz, essentially. There's the processor stepping. I got, I'm got. i not worried about it. I got to fit my E7300 in here at some point, but I got a little, I want to look that up on Intel's ARC page first before I go in and redo the thermal paste a third time if I... I don't want to have to do it again and have to do four reapplications when I upgrade the stand processor if it's even possible. <laughs> so you have four gigs of memory, three gigs is 667, and one is 533. I did that because I don't have any 667 memory, and it, the 666 yeah. sti six sticks I have are bad. And there's the BIOS. Up. Yeah, I don't think I think I got that in time. Yeah, it's got the 7862209 BIOS. There's my chassis serial number. Yeah. So that's it for the BIOS on this thing. I wasn't able to make an interesting video, but you know what? I might as well make a tour because just like because I can, and I'm not gonna be able to do anything with this for a little bit until I get that heat sink shroud. So that's it for the video right now. I want to get the heatsink shroud, then I'll worry about finding a hard drive and pop on a DVD drive and put XP on here for the BIOS update, the, the, the microcode update, and then I'll put Linux on it after I can confirm the E7300 is good, or I can put the E6600 back in. So either way, that's it for a little bit about this machine at least. Now to talk about the Octoplex 380, which is in a similar position. But I'm a little better off on it. And I'm probably going to do that first, then this thing, because it, that one's, this one's such a mess with the components. Oh, and apparently I'm missing this bracket, which, does anyone have another part number for this? It's the DC5700 small form factor locking bracket. If you know, put it in the comments. And then I'll go ahead and find one. All right, now to talk about the keeper in the lock that I'm gonna work on first. I'm gonna do that DC5700 second for a couple reasons, of which I'll go over in the video, and why I like this one a tad better, if you wanna be quite honest about it. So as we see here, we have an Optiplex 380. This is the mini tower variant of the machine, not the overheaters that I was told that I don't have, which is a good thing. <laughs> so once again, we got a Core 2 Duo. Yeah, Core 2 Duo. Windows 7 Professional. I don't know what version is up on my head because I don't have a hard drive for it yet, which I'll show you that later since I get into the video. But yeah, it's got a Windows 7 Pro license, a Core 2 Duo of some type. It's an E6800, I think. It's the 2.93, it's the 2 65 nanometer one with 3 megs of L2. So I think it's the E6800. Don't take my word for it. I, didn't, I don't remember. It's been that long since I got these things. And just proof there's a Windows 7 license. Yeah. In the 7 Pro away, Dell. <laughs> right, so let's take a tour in the machine as I have it right now. I'll make any points I need to. All right, first things first is I did some upgrading <laughs> well in advance. Is this video card isn't standard? If this was, it would have been a D, it wouldn't it wouldn't have DVI-D on it. 
it would have the DMS 59s on it and would only have one. So that's how you can tell that this is not the stock video card or a Dell OEM upgrade. So I upgraded that and I saved this blocking plate from another computer I have somewhere. Yeah, I'll go over Yeah, there are. I have one of the no plates over it to make it look at least somewhat decent so I can, people know not to use it because with these Dell machines, if you have a video card in here like this and you don't have and you use the integrated video, it yells at you at post about it. So I blocked that off. It did not have these when I got it. I got it without these. I just have the Snidies from another Dell computer I have. That's BTX. They were the same one. They, this used the same caddies as the Dimension 5150 did. But I modded them a little bit to take any drive I wanted. So if I went to an adapter in here, I technically could now. So I solved that problem early on before I put them in the system. I cutting it off and then hacking it up. But that shouldn't look like that. I think it's pretty obvious that that's a mod. But I feel that's kind of necessary to point out. So that people are always aware it's not proper. <laughs> yeah, we have an onboard speaker on this thing. Which hooks up down there. Yeah, it hooks up down there. And then we have the fan back here. with This is a 140 millimeter, I think. With this puny ass heat sink that I don't really like at all, but I have to keep it there, otherwise, I'll cook the processor to death. So, until I get a proper heat sink, that's stuck there, unfortunately. Ugh. Yeah, we have the sat serial, um, we have the serial ATA ports here, and we have a third one, but not a fourth one, interestingly. Yeah. I don't know why Dell did that. That makes no sense unless it's hidden somewhere else. But this doesn't have IDE, so I can't put IDE drives in here and be done with it, unfortunately, for the DVD drive at least. So, oh well. It looks like on this particular board, it's two DVD drives or two hard drives. I'll take two hard drives, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, there's our North Bridge, and here's the, big, here's the first problem. I didn't get memory with it either, nor did I get hard drives or caddies. So, I didn't hook the monitor up a lot, a lot because it's not going to boot, but I just wanted to show the sound these make for reference purposes. If anyone else has one that they need to diagnose, if they don't know if their problem is memory or not, so you could at least know the beat cause of what to look for. Now it's a DVD drive over here, which is, yeah, it's, a, it's your standard DVD burner. Nothing special, it's a DVD-ROM. With a 255 watt power supply, shockingly. Voltage is a little strange, but okay. Five extra watts, I'll take what I can get. With the fan in the back, and shockingly, this is from Michigan, it's from 2011. So to see Dell is... Still using this style on these machines is a little strange. And awkwardly enough, on their ATX machines, the power supply fan still in the back, while everyone else is doing it on the bottom. So don't you see with the times with the power supplies? Seriously, because this is a little ridiculous, but. It's burning 80 millimeter back ones on the main on the standard Dells. It's pretty much the consumer grade ones. So okay, I'll let that go in this case. So let's move it up and show what it does. There's also another feature I want to show on these things that you could also make use of too if you weren't sure if your power supply was good. You see these diagnostic lights? It didn't get past one, and it's crying about the memory. 
Yeah, so, this is how you can tell if you have no memory or bad memory in these machines. That beeps really annoying me now. So I need to get some memory for it, but that's okay. I'll, I'll be going on eBay or something soon. Now, if you look on the back of some of these machines, you'll see this. This is interesting. I'll show you what it does. Just in case you see it and you're not sure what it does. But this is actually a power supply just that's built into the power supply. It's not separate like most of the power supply tests I've used and seen. So, yeah, it's nice they put this in there, but I don't really think it's thorough. It at least test the 5 volt standby to see if it's getting power, but that's about it. So take whatever you get with this with a grain of salt, but this will at least test your 5 volt standby, I think. So, if you press this, this happens. The CPU fan runs like a fucking monster. Along with the power supply fan. And your video card fan, so. Initial, it, it, oh, now I know what it does. It initializes to 12 volt to see what if everything gets power, but it doesn't test anything else. So, I don't see the point of the button, but nice going. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice. If the system's dirty and you press that button, have one of these on hand well in advance. You're gonna need it if the system's dirty. I found out the hard way. <laughs> so that's it for the videos on these computers I scored months ago. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and get these uploaded now. Because I believe the originals by accident.